for hosting this wonderful two-day extravaganza, I think it seems like. And um, uh, thank you to the IPHM for doing this and for uh, giving us opportunities to showcase what we do, um, because I think that's really valuable as practitioners and as entrepreneurs. Um, my name is Dawn Kirkham, and I'm... Um, it's good morning for me. It's 7.30. I'm in Victoria, um, Vancouver Island. I'm on the unceded territory of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, the Songhees, uh, Esquimalt and Wasanic nations. And um, we're eight hours um, behind the UK time. So um, I'm glad I got my timing right. And I'm here at the right time, which is thank goodness. Um, so I'm here to talk about is your home healthy? Because one of the things that I do um, is how healing and um, this has been uh, kind of an amazing journey of the last couple of years where it's integrating lots of different aspects of what I've done previously and it's kind of this integrating piece and it was the last uh, jigsaw puzzle piece for me so I am a Reiki master uh, teacher, I'm a master crystal therapist, I'm a clairvoyant medium and I work uh, with um, uh, individuals who are having paranormal experiences. So uh, that's kind of how I focus my, my mediumship and um, I'm also um, an earth energy uh, dowser. And as a, um, as a therapist working one-on-one uh, -on -one with, with clients, you know, they were coming with some real uh, kind of chronic um, uh, conditions that really, you know, Western medicine just hadn't uh, resolved for them. And it really got me thinking as to what what might be going on kind of more broadly. And um, there's no, never any coincidences, really. But at that time, I did uh, connect with a geomancer who'd been um, actually engaged by a mental health trust to um, uh, assess the landscape um, to ensure that there weren't any subtle energies that were going to be contributing to the mental wellness of their clientele. And... It was like, um, you know, like one of those kind of exploding moments when I thought, oh, my goodness, I hadn't even considered about the, um, you know, the landscape and whether or not that was contributing to uh, to wellness. So I ended up doing a big, deep dive into the subtle energies that were all exposed to you know every you know every day and the impact that that has on our health and wellness so that's what i'm going to focus on i'm going to talk about what those subtle energies are and how they affect us i'm going to talk about the process of uh, healthy home assessment and harmonization and at the end and this will tantalize you to stay to the end i'm going to give you some things that you can do yourself or you can advise your clients to do um if they're um struggling with uh, with any of this um, uh, subtle energy impact. So that is my pitch for what I'm going to do today. Um, so let's just, um, um, I would love to, um, uh, if, if I'm able to answer any chat comments that, that you have as well, and any questions that would be good, you can pop them on the chat and I'll try and answer them. So um, first thing is, is just really a, a, a poll uh, for you. So I, I'd love to know, and I'd love to know in the chat if you're able to, do you experience any of these things? So if you don't feel refreshed in the morning after you wake up, if you're um, restless in, in, in bed or you you find it difficult to get into sleep or you have excessive dreaming or heavy sleep or lots of sleep requirements, maybe you've got cold or restless feet and legs in bed. Maybe you feel fatigue and lethargy, um, unexplained mood changes. Uh, perhaps you wake up at an odd angle in bed, you know, maybe at the edge of the bed. Um, maybe you've got children who repeatedly um, uh, kind of gravitate to a particular part of the bed, kind of see your, your infants all squished on one side of the bed. Maybe you just feel that there's something wrong uh, in the home, it, you know, the, it, it just doesn't feel right. You don't look forward to going home. You feel better away from home. Perhaps you've got a health issue that isn't responding to, uh, to, to, to treatment. And maybe it became uh, apparent when you moved 
to your your new home <clears throat> and maybe it's changed hands lots and lots of times so i would love to know <clears throat> if any of that so siobhan says yes 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 um and, and, you know any of that ring true for you i would love to know because if it does it could be that there is some subtle energies that are impacting your home that you may not even know about and i hope you don't mind i have a coffee here 7.30 in the morning, I need a coffee. But it is decaffeinated, so it's all just in my mind. <clears throat> well, I'll move on, but just um, give that some thought because this, this, might, be, this might be you having... Um, so I'm trying to close my, my chat down now. This might be you. So this is... The whole kind of kit and caboodle, what we what we look at, and I'm going to talk about these in a little bit of uh, a, a, um, a little bit of detail. And so these are the kind of main big four buckets that that we look at when we do a healthy home assessment. Um, now I'm a I'm a dowser, I'm an earth energy dowser. So we come at this process through uh, dowsing, and I don't know if you know what uh, dowsing is. Maybe you you use a pendulum in, in your practice, and if you do, then you are dowsing. Um, so it really it is just using a tool, so a pendulum or a set of rods, to tap into your intuition, a just way in which you can access that you know kind of higher self wisdom. It's the stuff that we know it's we can access to it any um any time but we don't pay attention to it so a pendulum or a set of rods allows us to do that so um the good thing about um, doing this work remotely um uh, uh, by dowsing is that we can work remotely so um i have clients from all over the world and you know interestingly um i have some um quite interesting clients as well so obviously lots of uh, people who are you know living or working in a space that just is not supporting them um but i also have um uh, clinic owners as well who really want to pay attention to the energetics the unseen uh, energies uh, because they want to make that space as supportive as possible um, and also realtors um, I work with realtors as well um, particularly if they're struggling to sell a particular home <clears throat> it could be because there's some uh, subtle energy uh, going on there so I've got some really interesting clients and they're they're all over the world and that's great that I can do that so um we look at these four four buckets so we look at geopathic stress and I'm going to talk um, a little bit in a moment as to what geopathic stress is and how it can affect us we look at technopathic stress and we look at geopsychic stress so that's just a posh word for spirits and ghosts and things that go bump in the night and then we also kind of tap into a client's personal uh, energetic health and um, see what's going on there. So they're kind of the big four buckets of what we look at when we do a full um, healthy home assessment. Now, with um, with the assessment, we're really only concerned with detrimental uh, energy. So I don't like using the term positive and negative. So I use detrimental and harmonious because some of the energy that is in our space is beautiful and harmonious and is supporting our wellness. Um, some of it is detrimental and I'll talk about why it's uh, detrimental and the interesting thing is that it might be detrimental to one person but not the other because we're all unique um, uh, individuals as well so sometimes we kind of have to pick through that um, uh, a little bit but that's that's our focus so looking at detrimental energy identifying those and then working to uh, to harmonize that gone the wrong way oh yes no that's good so um let me talk about geopathic stress and what geopathic stress is so we th there is a natural vibration there's a natural energy um from from the earth and it kind of starts at the core the cause uh, the core of the earth's 
uh, turning and it's creating electromagnetic frequency that comes out and kind of bounces off the uh, the, the stratosphere. And um, we know that that's a thing because Schumann measured that. You know, uh, it's a it's a low frequency at seven point eight three hertz, and that is the natural frequency of the Earth, and it's what all life has grown up within. So it's it's our it's our natural frequency. We we we're aligned to that. Uh, energetically it's also um uh, close to alpha brainwave state as well which is where we're we're in you know a light meditation and that kind of um uh, stress free free brain state um so so that's that's what what you know naturally we're we're used to so geopathic stress is just a distortion of that um, um, which which is either making it, you know, kind of a, a higher uh, a frequency or a lower frequency that is just uh, outside of our natural state. So that's what geopathic stress is, quite quite simply. And and that, what contributes to that? Well, a lot of it is, you know, kind of the natural um, uh, geology of the earth. So it could be um, underground streams. And there are so many underground streams that we just don't realize uh, exist beneath our feet. And that those streams can give off um, a, a radiation, which can seep into our homes and that, then kind of get trapped in the structure. And uh, that can cause um, uh, geopathic stress. It could be the uh, the bedrock, the you know the actual ge geology that the home or the location is built on. It could be the 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 minerals in the soil or in the the rocks itself. It could be um, uh, fault lines and fissures. Um, it could be earth energy lines and channels, and um, you know the earth is. Uh, full of this, you know, kind of meridian system that distributes earth energy across the, the globe. And sometimes those earth energy lines and channels are a high, vi high vibration and um, uncomfortable to spend any, um, any time over. So it could be that. And it also could be human made, um, which is our Wi-Fi and our uh, electrical equipment. And I'm going to talk about that uh, separately. So they're the things that can contribute to this distortion of this um, energy state that, that we have uh, uh, naturally. And um, really, it's impactful when we're um, over it for long periods of time. And particularly of a night, and I'm going to talk about why nighttime is important um, a little bit uh, later. So we're very uh, keen as Earth Energy doses as um, uh, house healers to look at those spots, those geopathic stress spots that might be under the bed or might be underneath your office chair where you spend eight hours a day or might be under the couch where you watch your favourite soaps because you are being exposed to those for longer uh, periods of uh, um, of time, you know, and this is not a new concept. This is, you know, ancient um, wisdom cultures have known about geopathic stress. They might have not have had that language, but they they know that it it it, it exists. And think about, you know, um, uh, feng shui and you know Chinese culture. You know, they even decreed that. Um, dwellings couldn't be built. And this is thousands of years ago. Dwellings couldn't be built where there was um, a high levels of geopathic stress or, you know, a, a black char. I think they, they they called it or dragon lines. Um, so that so they 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 know the impact. But also think about you know our kind of ancestry so the megalithic builders of uh, of of europe they built the uh, stone monoliths in places of high energy high high vibration they didn't live there they went and did ritual and ceremony there so you know we're we've lost kind of some of that natural wisdom and we're just um uh, getting that that back uh, now but also, you know, animals, animals know and understand geopathic stress far better than than we. So sometimes observing animal behavior is a good indication that uh, there is geopathic stress uh, present. So herd animals, uh, horses, sheep, uh, cows, they don't like to um, spend time over geopathic stress lines. So they'll avoid that in the um, in the field. So if you see, you know, a flock of sheep, 
um, or a herd of sheep, not of their flocks, are they? A herd of sheep um, lying down together, then you know that that's um, a, um, not a geopathic stress zone. It's um, going to be uh, helpful and supportive to their to their health. Uh, but think about, you know, we, we put horses in stalls and um, I've worked with lots of um, uh, people with horses and the horses have got some chronic illnesses or bad behavior or something. And actually there's a, there's a geopathic stress zone exactly under their stable and they can't can't get away from it they're they're forced to kind of stand over it for long periods of time so um animals animals know that they're very very wise interestingly uh, dogs and cats are very different so dogs don't like geopathic stress zones um i've had clients that have said you know i bought this really expensive pet bed and they won't lie in it they're lying on a concrete floor but it's because the bed is over some geopathic stress and the dog won't go near it but if you've got a cat they like geopathic stress so if you've got a cat and their favorite spot is on your bed it might be because there's a geopathic stress zone under there so um, we always look at uh, animal behavior. Bees love geopathic stress, but they don't like Wi-Fi and technopathic stress. Ants, if you've got lots of ants or anthills, uh, it might be to do with geopathic stress. Um, uh, and, um, trees and plants as well are very um, responsive to geopathic stress. And so um, you've got um, uh, some trees that absolutely hate it and some trees that absolutely love it. Um, if, if you've got a tree that's kind of bending over or it looks like it's trying to escape, then um, it, it might be because there's some geopathic stress uh, under, underneath its roots that are causing it some, some issues. And um, this one is for Andy, if, he, if he's still on, a lot of um, herbs that are um, beneficial for us actually like geopathic um, uh, stress zones. So they, they, they grow and they thrive in geopathic stress zones. So I don't know what that's about, but it's very, very interesting anyway. Um, so that's just kind of a little bit of a, a, um, a rundown oh, and, and crop and um, milk production. So farmers are really um, uh, keying into how the uh, energy beneath the fields could be either um, supporting their, their crop production or um, uh, uh, drawing away from it. And uh, a lot of Australian uh, farmers are embracing this because they've got such harsh landscapes that trying to produce food from. And so they're kind of looking at geopathic stress and uh, trying to work with uh, geomancers to uh, resolve that. So, um, so it's really, really important. Um, because it can cause some of the things that I, that I talked about a little earlier. I'll just keep an eye on the time. It can cause uh, drowsiness, fatigue, you know, um, sleep issues, headaches, migraines, numbness, tingling in your hands and your feet. You might feel zoning out. You have trouble kind of focusing. Um, a general nervousness, a low mood, unusual changes in emotions, tensions, conflicts. Uh, between uh, those that um, are in the household and uh, nausea and ultimately a lowered immune system which could lead to other um, other more uh, uh, um, health issues so it really is a good thing to get rid of any uh, or harmonize um, any geopathic stress so that it is um, healthy and uh, supportive of uh, health. Um, so I'm going to um, just show you a quick video. Hopefully it'll play. Um, I took a group, um, we, it's a, um, I teach healthy home assessment, and I took a group and we were doing some, some dousing. And you can see here we've mapped a, a geopathic stress line. This is the center. And uh, I'm just going to show you um, what, hopefully you can see that as, we, as I'm walking through. So right down the middle of this geopathic stress zone, it split the rock. You see that a lot. Look at the tree, it's you know bending away. That's right down the middle of a geopathic stress zone. 
you know, and if you see the back of the hedge here, it's not as full as something, you know, going on on here. This was a really powerful geopathic stress line that we identified. You think about it's going through this house uh, here. There's a house behind that it's going through. Um, so we were able to harmonize that and at least leave some of the pressure off that. So that's kind of just a very visual example of what you can see in the landscape if you look for it. So I'm going to talk about technopathic stress and electromag uh, electromagnetic radiation, because that is something that we look at as well as, um, as earth energy um, uh, dowsers and healthy home uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, diagnosis. Um, and we're talking about um, uh, pulsed radio frequencies, the so cell phones, cell towers, cordless phones, Wi-Fi, smart meters. And we're also talking about power frequency fields, which is kind of dirty electricity. So power lines, transformers, electrical items in your home. And, you know, um, the science is divided. Um, there are lots of um, uh, funded scientists that uh, resist the... Um, the notion that these frequencies uh, affect health, they, they, the, the, the research shows that it, it, it does produce biological changes. Where they struggle to go to um, is that those biological changes result in health issues. Um, but there are so many um, and a growing body of research and science to say that there is concern and we do need to think about uh, lowering our um, exposure to technopathic stress because it is having a health impact. And I think, you know, only time will tell. Um, we are a big uh, um, experiment in all of that. Um, and I think it's just a growing body of knowledge and wisdom and science that's um, supporting that is something that we want to be mindful of. Now, I'm not anti, um, I'm not anti uh, technology. I love my uh, technology, but I think there's something about um, lowering our exposure and distancing ourselves from it is a, is a healthy thing. And I'm going to talk, uh, talk a little bit uh, about that. Now, um, you know, it, it is no um, secret that we exist in this soup of uh, um, electromagnetic uh, radiation. And, you know, cell phones use um, microwave technology and microwave heats things up. And so one of the um, aspects to, uh, to all of this is that it heats our cells up, it heats our bodies up. You know, I'm always curious as to whether this is heating the planet up and is that creating climate change? I don't know, but it's an interesting uh, concept. And countries set their own safe exposure limits and they're different. Some have um, uh, lower limits than, than others. And, you know, it's, it's, I think, in my opinion, based on some outdated science. And um, it's, so even if your cell phone says it's within FCC limits, I still think you want to look at that and limit your um, exposure because there's a cumulative um, effect to all of this. And we know that, um, and, and science has, has, you know, has proven that people are, um, hypersensitive. There are some people that are hypersensitive to these uh, these these frequencies, and there are lots of scientific studies out there that are linking it to uh, health and uh, behavioural issues um, as well. So, um, not that I want to be an alarmist, but what I do want to do is to um, uh, arm people with some 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 knowledge and some you know, um, maybe a call to action about doing their, their own research and kind of limiting their, their exposure. Because if you are hypersensitive, sleep disturbances again, insomnia, headaches, uh, depression or depressive uh, symptoms, tiredness and fatigue, um, painful, often kind of itchy sensation on the skin, uh, lack of concentration, changes in memory, dizziness, irritability, loss of appetite and weight loss, restlessness, anxiety, nausea, skin burning and tingling. These could be some of the, you know, hypersensitive uh, aspects of exposure to uh, technopathic stress. So I'm not going to um, go on too much more about that. Um, 
But I do want to talk about the biological versus health, um, health effects because this is what's making a difference in the minds of the scientists. So yes, there's the biological effect that can be evidenced, but does this then lead to uh, health, uh, health effects? And these are some of the things that research is, you know, is showing. So um, technopathic stress and you know, geopathic stress as well can t- do changes in um, temperature, um, a change in the blood-brain barrier, uh, changes in melatonin, calcium levels, DNA damage, and gene expression. And um, one of the things that we're um, very, uh, you know, I said about, we're very um, observant about what goes under the bed uh, at, at night is because of a night, you know, uh, the sun goes down, so the, the natural um, uh, radiation reduces and it allows our body to rest. And so sleep is really important for our, for our health and, and wellness, but it also allows our brain to send signals to our cells. So our cells to um, uh, repair themselves, to um, uh, go out and defend the, you know, from kind of viruses and things like that. But when we're over geopathic stress, or there's, um, we're, uh, we've got technopathic stress effects, of, of the, there's a disruption in brain activity. So we're not able to, they're not able to send those, those messages. So having a, a, an impact on our immune system. Um, but also it um, uh, impacts our pineal gland and our pineal gland releases melatonin, um, which does have some cancer busting uh, elements to it. And it's also connected to sleep. So if we're um, suffering the effects of these stress stress zones, we're not getting the right release of melatonin. It's um, having an issue with sleep. It's also potentially um, uh, not giving us the protection that we uh, we need from it. Uh, we know that um, cell phone radiation reduces sperm production, but also the mobility of sperm as well. Um, there's been studies that have shown that uh, women who keep their um, phones in their bra uh, finding um, over time that they um, they do um, uh, get tumors exactly in the space where they put their, their phone. Um, children acting out at school, not being able to focus in school, poor, poor concentration for ourselves, and we're not clumsy, we're just on a geopathic stress zone. Um, but research does exist, and it's linking geopathic stress and technopathic stress to, to cancer, to ADHD, to chronic uh, fatigue, sudden infant uh, uh, deaths, infertility, birth defects, arthritis, and, and more. And again, I'm not trying to be a uh, worry water here or alarm you. Um, I think we just need to be aware and reduce the impact of, of these things. And this is one of the reasons why um, the house healing work that I do is such an important part of uh, who I am. And um, if I can help uh, people, um, I will. Um, so geopsychic stress is uh, another bucket. So this is the unbalanced energies within a property. So from present occupants or previous occupants or from the land that the house is built on. So we, we dig into earthbound souls, energy imprints, thought forms, power objects, elementals, guardians of the environment, portals, and also some ETs, so off-world entities. And, and these are some of the things that you might be experiencing um, if you've got any of those. So cold spots or feeling uh, a bit of being watched, unexplained mood changes, things that go missing a lot, uh, unexplained noises, bumps and knocks, shadows, apparitions, light anomalies, electrical equipment disruptions, parts of the property where you don't feel welcome and persistent and unusual bad luck um, can all be to do with um, spirits and and ghosties and, and all of that. So we get to tap into that through our process. We also look at personal health, so chakra alignment blockages, uh, energy influences, any disturbances in the aura. We can even um, tap into DNA or cellular memory that needs clearing, psychic cords, karmic issues, past life uh, memory, psychic attack, and um, all the rest as well. So uh, we get to do kind of a full um, uh, assessment on the client as well. 
And um, we also look at beneficial beneficial energies. So um, where are the beneficial um, spots that um, are going to be helpful for the client um, to spend time on for healing and balancing? We also give recommendations around color and frequency uh, recommendations too. Um, so how do you know if you're experiencing these types of things? Well, if you could answer yes to any of those self-assessment questions. But, you know, I invite you to assess your energy. Pay attention to how you feel when you're outside the home as opposed to when you're inside the home. Do you feel better away from it? Um, move from room to room. Pay attention to how you feel as you do. Maybe each time you enter a threshold, pause, take stock, step through and pay attention to how you feel and move around the room assessing those feelings. And if you can douse, try, uh, try dousing, try using a pendulum to locate them and investigate and eliminate any other possibilities, of course. Um, and if you do have health concerns, you know, you must absolutely visit your physician. So, um, uh, you know, work alongside a house healer, but always um, seek medical advice. And so what can you do? Well, you know, the big thing that I that we often talk about in house healing is move your furniture or your bed or your couch. Uh, turn your Wi-Fi off at night. Remove Wi-Fi enabled devices from your bedroom. Uh, move electronic devices further away from your bed. Oh, I'm, I'm only on a minute. Um, uh, change metal bread, bed frames, uh, disrupt the energy uh, with crystals, salt lamps, organite, uh, ground. You can purchase shielding technology. I won't go on because I don't want to um, take up time from the uh, next presenter. Uh, but there are some things that you can do. They are no uh, no cost or low cost, and these will have a big, uh, big impact for you. And so I am uh, not going to uh, go through these, but I'll just flash my website, my um, uh, ways to contact me. I do uh, training. I can do online training um, uh, and uh, in-person training, but you can find me if you're interested in any of this. Uh, you can find me at my website, dawnkirkham.com or my college uh, website, internationalcollegeofenergyhealing.com. And I would love you to reach out and we can chat and and um, I can tell you more about what I do if you're interested. Oh, that was amazing. Thank you, Dawn. You're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity.